Hi folks, so in this video what we're going to do is we're going to cover over the uh, DCG paper from 2021 and specifically the question here based on the topic of geologic geometry and some teachers call it uh, road geometry, okay? Uh, so this sheet here will always be in the back of section A, okay, which is the sheet that you have to work from and then in the section B and C part you'll get the actual information that you have to apply to the worksheet then. So it says here C1 part A under the topic of geologic geometry, as I said previously, it's called roads. Uh, the accompanying map, which is this guy here, uh, located on the back page of section A, shows ground contours at five meter vertical intervals. So a little bit of information there. Um, five meter vertical intervals, that is the height between our contours. A little bit of information in our scale down here is one is to a thousand. Okay, um, on the bank of a river used for kayaking. A, B, C, D is the edge of the river, and O is the center of the circular curve A, B, which forms part of the river edge, and the river has the following specifications. So the river is going from A to B to C to D, and you can see O there is the center point of this kind of curve from A to B, okay? Um, the river has the following specifications. So I'm going to highlight some of these here now. Uh, the, portion of the, uh, the portion of the river edge between A and C is level at an altitude of 95 meters. So what they're saying is the section from A to C is level at 95 meters. So I'm going to write that in there. So I know A straight away is at 95 meters. Okay, I should have written that in a little bit better than that. B is at 95 meters. And C is at 95 meters. Okay, and all I'm going to write in there then is level at... 95 meters A to C. Just like that. A little bit of information. Take it straight from the sheet and apply it here. Okay. Um, then it says the portion from C to D is falling. So C to D falling uniformly. So it's falling at an even rate uniformly to a level of 90 meters at D. Okay. So we know C is at 95 and D is now at 90 meters. So all I'm going to write in there. Falling C to D. Okay, so that's the information. So C is the high part, D is the low part, and uh, the river is kind of dropping in height there, if that makes sense. Okay, now a little bit of information here. It says then using slide slopes of one and two for cuts. So for my cuts, I'm going to go with green. Okay, and one and 1.5, I'm going to use red for embankments otherwise known as fills, okay? So this is a fill, okay? And the green then is a cut. Okay, so using side slopes of one and two for cuts and one and 1.5 for fills, complete the artworks necessary to accommodate the river on the northern side. Note the artworks on the southern side have already been completed. Okay, we get on to the B part of the question then. So what we have to do is we have to do the artworks up here on the top side of the road. The south side has already been done. Okay, um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify some sections of it. I'm going to focus on the A to C part first because C to D is kind of falling, uh, whereas this is all level. Okay, so we don't have to do any kind of um, cut cones or fill cones until we get to the C to D section. So I'm going to focus on this part first. Now what I always like to do is I'm going to identify where I'm going to be doing cuts and fills. So... I'm going to look at the land around it, so 95 to 95, I'm going to look at the land, so first of all actually, what I often like to do is plot where the 95 contour is passing through it, so there's a point right here, if you look at the 95 contour, that's a point that passes right through uh, the river, if I keep following it along, I've got another one over here, right there at the C point, and that is another one, and 100, 105, 110, 110, 95 there, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So then two points there. Right, now what I have to identify then is where I'm going to be doing cuts and fills. So when I'm going to do a cut, it's where the land is higher than the river. Okay, in this case, often it's the road, but the river in this case. So I have 95 there, and if I look at the next contour, it's 100, 105, 110, 110, 105, 100, all the way down to 95. So from here, all these contours, okay, that are passing through the river, they are all going to be cuts because they are higher. And for my cuts, as I said previously, I'm using the green. So I'm just going to write in there, cuts. Okay. And then if we come over here to this part, 
from this point on 95 90 85 80 that's all going to be fills because that is where the land is lower okay and sometimes then i like to come along and i'm just going to highlight that section there using a red for my fills okay and then from here on that's all going to be the green area then for my cuts now obviously on the day of a test you're not going to come along with your highlighter and do all this stuff this is me just for demonstration purpose in the video writing in cut and fill is absolutely fine okay um so that's what we're going to focus on first now what i'm going to do is i'm going to focus on uh the fill portion here first so if we come to the sheet i often do this then get a scrap piece of paper and i'm going to do cuts on one side and fills on the other and fill then we know is an embankment i'm going to write an embank there okay now my cut ratio is one is to two my fill ratio is one is to 1.5 so my cut ratio one is to two so every one meter i go up in height uh, i'm going to go out two meters so that's kind of the shape of my triangle there my fill ratio is one is to 1.5 so a little bit different okay now what do we do we have to take the difference in height between the contours which in this case is five 100 to 105 so five is going to be contour height that is the difference between each one and i'm going to apply that five to each ratio so five multiplied into our triangle here five into one is or five times one is five five times two is ten now ten is the measurement we're going to measure out for our cuts the reason being is because as we look at the plan view okay on the map we can only tell this measurement we cannot tell the measurement going down because we cannot measure down into the map okay now i'm going to take the five and multiply it into the fill okay that would be 5, 5 into 1.5, that would be 7.5. So anytime I do a fill, okay, I'm going to measure out 7.5. Anytime do I do a cut, I'm going to measure out an increments of 10, okay? And we'll come below that when we get onto the part of the road from C to D down here. We get onto that. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So starting off there now, I'm going to do a line out here, first of all, from O. And you can see I've already got a line connecting from O to B. I'm simply going to extend that. Just like that there. And I'm going to do my measurements on that. Um, and the first measurements I'm actually going to do are... I will do another one from O through to 95 there as well. Because that's quite helpful. Okay. And I've done one there. Now on this one here, I'm going to do the cut measurements. And on this one here, I'm going to do the fill measurements. So for the cut measurements, if you remember, I'm going to measure out in increments of 10. So for all my cuts, okay, I'm going to measure out in 10, and it's always from the side of the road, or sorry, in this case, the river. I'm measuring out in 10 millimeter increments, so 10, 20, 30, 40, and based on it, 95, 100, 105, 110, yeah, I think that's enough. And here then, 95, 90, 85, 80. So I have to go out and treat our 7.5s, if you remember from here. So anywhere I'm doing a fill, I'm measuring out in 7.5s. So from the side of the road, I get me to 7.5 would be 15. So that's the first one. 7.5 out from there, right there. I think I need one other one. Right there, another 7.5. Okay, so I've measured out in increments of 7.5. There. Now, I'm going to write those in. So for my cuts, okay, if this is 95, even though I measured out 10 millimeters, that's just the increment I measure out because the ratio was 1 is to 2. Okay, I'm going to go up, and it's just in relation to the contours, 5 millimeters, or sorry, 5 meters. So 95 will go up to 100, and then it'll go up to 105. Then I go 110, and I think 110 is the highest I go as far as, so I'm happy with that. And now for my fills, it's going to drop down from the side of the road. So if this is 95, it's going to go down to 90, 85, and 80. Okay, now using my compass, I'll start with the fill section of the road, put the center point on O. 95 is already done for me, so I'm going to put it out as far as the 90 mark. You can see the little 90 mark I've got there, and I'm going to pass through the 90 contours. So I've got a mark there. There's a 90, so that's happy. I'm happy with that one. 
Now you can do the heart the whole way around, but I'm just going to keep it neat and tidy. I'm going to mark it up as far as the 85, mark it through the 85 contour. Okay, and then out to the 80. And there's the 80 contour. And then you assume there might be a 75 and so on, so you can see my contours there. Now I'm going to do the same here with the 95. 95 is already done. I'm going to mark as far as the 100. I'm going to mark through the 100 contours. So I've got one there. You can see it here. Have I any other 100? There's 95. Oh, the 100 is here as well. Okay, then I'm out to the 105. So there's 105 right there. So there's one right there. Have one here as well, I assume. Yeah, and then up to 110. And I've got the 110 there. And another one here. Okay, you can see how I plot those points. I'm just going to mark them in. So there's that one, that one. That one. So it looks to me there like we've accounted for the bend in the road at least. So I'm going to sketch it in first just with pencil. Right, now that I've done that, I'm just going over for demonstration purposes always in this video. I'm just going to use the marker to highlight it out a little bit better. And as always, I'll always say it, on the day of a test you're obviously using a pencil and you're just going a little bit harder with the pencil. Because as you can see, I actually slightly missed out on that point there, but you get the idea. And from here, it goes only as far as there, but I assume it's just going to continue on. Okay, so we've done that part of the road. We've done the cut portion. We've done the fill portion. Now we're on to the part of the road where the road, or sorry, I keep saying road, the river is falling from a height at C of 95 down to a height at D of 90. So there's a height difference of 5 meters from C to D, and it drops down in height. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to account for that drop in height and then either determine where we're going to either fill or where we're going to cut the land. So what we are moving on to here now is what's known as uh, when the roads are inclining or declining, okay? So I'm just going to say in this case, it is a river, okay? And I'm going to say incline slash decline. Now, the first thing we do is we have to account for that height. And what we need to do is we're going to be putting in either a fill cone or a cut cone. Now, how do we do that and how do we determine the size of each cone? So what that actually is going to be dictated by is the difference in height from C to D. Okay, and this is really easy. C is at 95, D is at 90. So look, I'll just put it in. C minus D equals, so 95 minus 90, 5 meters. So 5 meters, it's kind of like this one that was up here, but that was in relation to the contour difference in heights. Okay, this is the difference in height between C and D. Okay, different positions on the road. But once again, it happens to work out to be five. Now we take that five, and once again, we're going to apply it to our cut and our fill. Okay, and our ratios. And our ratio again was one is to two for our cuts, and this was one is to 1.5. Okay, and we multiply that in. So five, and that would be 10. So the measurement, and we're going to have a radius of 10 for our cuts, and for our fill, it's going to be the exact same as the one previously. It's going to be 7.5. That's going to be radius 7.5. Okay. Now, how does that work? Okay. So in this case, um, it's like we have, if I put it in here, now as best I can, I'm going to associate it with a road. So if I do a little sketch here. Now, this low part is like D. This high part up here is C. Put that in then. Now we know C is at 95 meters. We know D is at 90 meters. Okay. Now, essentially, the river is obviously flowing down in this direction here. Okay. And it's going down and it's at a height up here and it's actually dropping in height. Now, whenever the land is higher than the river or road, whatever way I'm explaining it, whenever the land is higher than that, what we need to do is account for that, okay, um, with a cut or a fill cone. So, in regards to a cut, just 
We've seen that number. Not a cut, sorry. I'll do the fill first. So I'm going to go with the green. Bear with me, the lights are going out here. So in regards to a fill, okay, so I'm going to go with my green. I'm going to be putting in a fill cone. Now, that basically is implied when basically the land is lower than the road. So I'm always going to put my fill cone at the higher part here. Okay, so at point C, which is the higher part, I'm going to put in a fill cone. And my fill cone here is going to be 7.5. So I would do a little cone like this. It would come out like that. Okay, and that would be my fill cone. And what's going to help with that then is from the lower part of the road, which in this case is a 90, I would do a tangent like that, connecting to it. And that's going to then help me fill up all that land inside there to shore it up. Okay, so when we do the fill cone, okay, when we do the fill cone, the fill cone is done from the higher part of the road. Okay. I'm just going to put in the fill comes in from the higher part of the road. Now, the opposite happens then for the cut. So technically, if you know the fill, the cut is the opposite. Now, with the cut side, we're going to do the cut cone from the lower part of the road. So from here, this is when the land is higher around it and we have to cut it away. So it's like I'm going to do a little cone here. That's my little, now I say a cone, I'm doing a quadrant of a cone, okay? And all I'm going to do then is, I would do a tangent then coming from the higher part of the road. Now that should be touching there. Okay? And that tangent there comes from the higher part of the road. Now that's kind of like where we're cutting the land all away from the road. Okay? Now when I do that, okay, I'm just going to write that in. Cut, and we do it from the lower part of the road, lower end. Lower, we're going to do it from the D, uh, and then the higher part, we're going to do it from C. Okay, and if you remember, then the radius for this guy is going to be, for the cut, it's going to be radius 10, and for the one over here, it was radius 7.5. Okay, so that's the bit of information I need. That's why I like to have one of these sheets to do all my rough work so I can see it clearly, and at least I know in my head I'm secure and I know I'm doing everything correctly. Okay. So, I'm going to focus on the higher part of the road first. And if you remember, at the higher part of the road, we're going to do a radius 7.51. Okay? And that one there is going to be for our fills. So, what I'm going to do is, from C, I'm simply going to do a line out from C. You can see that little line there, kind of hard to see. I'm going to measure out 7.5 on that line. Okay, from D, do the exact same. Usually you do it, but it doesn't matter. And on this one, I'm going to measure out a distance of 10. Okay, now I'm going to get my compass from D. I'm going to do a radius of 10. And the reason I'm doing two of them, sometimes you don't need two. You might only need one, but I already determined beforehand I'll put in this one here as well because there's elements of this land area around it that are both higher and lower so in this case I need to do both cuts and fills let's see here now there's a 7.5 so there's my arc radius 7.5 here and radius 10 here and what I'm going to do now is from the C point I'm going to put this one in Okay, there's my tangent line. Now, I am going to write on that, and that one there is coming from the 95. So that's actually going to be my fill tangent. Is it my fill tangent? Radius 10, sorry, that's my cut tangent. Apologies. Okay, so I'm just going to write in cut tangent. Okay, and that one is coming from the higher part of the road. So this here is going to be measured at 95. Okay, and then I'm going to put in my tangent for the other one. It's going to come from D to the top of the arc. Okay, and that there is going to be my fill tangent. And what you do is then the measurement on it comes from where the tangent started. Tangent started at 90, so this is going to be 90. Okay, so there we have it. I've got my two tangents. I have them in their correct positions. Now I'm going to do all the cut versions first, and I'll do the fill version second.
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to need a perpendicular line to the tangent. So I probably should have underlined properly at the start, actually. I'm just doing it randomly out. So perpendicular to the tangent, the cut tangent, from D. And see the line that I've just done there. I'm going to measure out, and this is for cuts. And if you remember previously, when we're doing cuts, we're measuring 10. I'm going to measure out in 10 millimeter increments. So I might only need two or three here. Not sure, I'll put in two or three just in case. So I have one there, there's 10, 20, 30. You can see it's slightly gone off the page there, absolutely fine. I'll put in another 10 going in, which is actually right in there on that one anyway. So I'm happy with that. Okay, and if you remember, when we do cuts, it's actually, as it moves away, it's going to go higher. So if this is 95, this one here for my cut tangent, Sorry, is it 90? Yeah, sorry, 95, because that was at the 95. It's going to go higher. So 95 will go up to 100, which will go up to 105. And looking at it here, 105 is the highest it goes. So that's perfect. I'm actually going to mark the 91 as well, which is right here, because it'll go 95, 100, 105. And obviously, if it goes down, it goes down to 90. Okay, so that's all my... Now, 90, I don't think the 85 will affect us too much. There is one there, but I'm not going to put it in just yet. So I'm going to identify now where it passes through the 95. So you can see the 95 contour. I've got my tangent in there. And if you follow it through the 95 contour, there's a point. Is there any other 95? Yep, there's another one there. Happy with that. And I'll find some more. Okay, now I'm going up to the 100. So parallel to the cut tangent line. I'm going to mark the 100, so there's a 100, there's a 100, is there any other 100s along here? No, up to the 105, there and there, and now I'll come down to the 91, there's one right there on that one, so I'm happy with that, is there any other 90s? Yeah, there seems to be one going in here, okay, so there I have it, that there is my cut portion, I'm going to put that in there now, going through all those points. I'm only going to put it in lightly first. We'll come down to here. Okay, so I've done that. Now I'm going to do my fill portion before I heavy it in. Now in regards to the fill, same thing. I need to do a measurement out or a line out perpendicular to the edge. So from there, let's just do a line like that. And on that line, I'm going to measure in 7.5 millimeter increments. So 7.5 millimeter there. There's two done. I'll add on another two. Okay. Extends out. I don't think I need that many, but. Right. Now, for fills, as it moves away from the road, it's going to drop in height. So we go 90. 85, 80, I think 80 is the lowest it goes, so that's actually fine. Um, I'll need it as far as the 80, but as it comes in, this would actually be 95 right there on the C. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now everything is going to move parallel uh, to the fill tangent. So the first one actually is the 90, and I'll plot those points first. So mark those with the black marker. So there's the 90. So I have one there. If I follow it down, make sure I have the right one. There'll be a point right there. Okay. Now the rest of them I'll mark with the pencil. So 90, 85. Oh, slip slightly. 85. There. And there. To the 80. There and there. I'll go down to 95. So there will be one 95 here as well. There's one there. Okay, that's all I think I actually need. Okay, there's no need to go any further. So look, from here, I'm going to do a curve like this now. So I actually meet in a perfect position there, so I'm quite happy with that. Now, I only heavy in the portion I don't heavy in. There we go. There's my two curves. So I'm going to start heavying them in now. Marker. So 
So here's the first one. So going to the 90 there. Up through the point here. Through that point. There was more points. Brought them in. Sorry. So up through all those. Back down. Now this is the bit I was trying to say. I'm not going to continue it on inside here. Okay, because obviously that's where the river is. Just showing you where the two of them meet, and they actually met in the exact same position. So I know Max is actually quite good here. And there we go. Okay, there it is, guys. That there is the artworks completed on the northern side of the road. Now, if you want to put in the tadpoles anywhere there's a cut, it's like the ball or a tadpole is going to go towards the river. When it's a fill, it is going to go away. So we'll go like this. Um, and I've got. Oh, I mixed up my colors here. Apologies. This is me messing it up again. Apologies. I should have had a red one there for um, cut tangent and a, a green one there for the. Uh, sorry, for. I should have had a green one here for the cut tangent and a red one for the fill tangent. Okay. So the cuts again. Um, I'm going to pop them in. And then the fill will go that way. Okay. So there's our tadpoles. Don't have to put in tadpoles. Okay. It's not necessary. But if you want to put them in, you can, and you understand the concept. So there we have it, guys. There is the first part of the question done. Tick that off now. Now what we have to do is we move on to the second part of the question. It says here, on a separate diagram on the map, the elevation and plan of three boreholes, um, sorry, three boreholes drawn from points P, Q, and R are shown. So you can see here, up here they've given us a borehole P, a borehole R, a borehole Q, and they've given us the elevation because we've got the XY line. And then we have the plan view of the borehole P, Q, and also R. And R is obviously just going straight vertically down. So it says, um, they, they reveal the top surface of a stratum of ore. So the top surface of a stratum of ore is often known, excuse me here, the top surface is also known as a head wall. Just, so just to be aware of that. The top surface of a stratum of ore. So that's the head wall, the top surface. Okay. At distances of 13, 15, and 10 meters from P, Q, and R, respectively. Okay. Part I, draw the elevation and plan of the top surface of that stratum. So basically what they're saying is P, if I measure down from P, 13 meters, measure down from Q, 15, and R, 10, I'll find where it, we hit basically that kind of, let's say it's the gold. Okay. So from P, Okay, I'm going to measure down 13, from Q, 15, and from R, 10. So from P, 13 millimeters down. As I drill down, I'm going to measure down. That's when I hit the stratum. So from there, make sure you're accurate here. Right there is that one. Kind of hard to see there. That's P. For Q, I'm going to measure down 15. Now Q is over here. 15 millimeters. Yep, yeah, happy with that. Just going to check that. Yep, yeah, 15 millimeters. And for R, it's down 10. No, actually, it's really important here, especially when it's so small. So what I am actually going to label those now, there's the green guy. This is the head wall, so I'm going to call this PH. This is RH. And this is QH. Because that is the head wall. Okay, and they wouldn't have said... Uh, top surface unless they probably need it later on. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to connect those up and draw in that stratum. And what this would kind of look like if you relate it to any other topic is kind of like it's a lamina. Okay, it's a planar surface. And draw that in now. Heavy it in. Actually put it in in. Put it in in green. Okay, so I've got the elevation now of that stratum. Now what I need to do is I need to find the plan. So now that I have the elevation, quite easy to find the plan. It's just a case of projecting down the points. So if I want to find pH in plan, that's where it is in elevation. Bring it down. Uh, and if I want to find QH, bring it down. And RH will actually just be at this point as well. So it's simply a case, once again, of connecting those up. Mm -hmm. 
there's that one connecting to here and then actually connect just straight across like that okay and there's our stratum of ore and if i was to label it again obviously this is ph i've got rh there and then i've got qh right here okay so that's the first part of the question so it says there draw the elevation and plan of a top surface of the stratum so we've drawn that in that part is done okay take it off now it says determine the strike and dip of the stratum so the strike is a level line running across it and then if we look perpendicular or sorry look along that line as a true length in the plan view we will then see the dip or the angle that it makes that stratum of ore makes in relation to the horizontal plane so that's what we're going to do there so that is always done from the middle height points which in this case which in this case is actually ph so from ph i'm going to put this in in red this time i'm going to do a level line going across my elevation so from ph a level line running across until it hits the edge or h to qh now i'm going to project that down to my plan view there is there just have to move again folks let's come back on now i've got the line ph going across there i did it from the middle height or h is the highest qh is low so i did it from ph where it hits the edge or h to qh which is right there I'll just check that down to my plan that's where it hits in the plan. I want to connect it up. And pH will connect to that. Okay, and there we have it. That line there is a horizontal line in elevation. Okay, it's a horizontal line in elevation parallel to the XY line. Therefore, this line here is a true length. But more importantly, this is our strike. Okay, now that we have the strike line, and because that strike is a true length, if we look along the true length, the surface that that true length is on, we will then see that surface as an edge view. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up an X1, Y1 perpendicular to the strike line. I'm trying to do this as neat as I possibly can. I'll keep everything a bit awkward here now. I'm going to go about here. Based on the space that we have, that doesn't really matter if I go outside it out here. This is absolutely fine. So I'll go up to about here. Okay, I'm going to do a line here now. Don't worry that it's gone outside the box. Absolutely fine. That line there is going to be an X1, Y1, because it's an auxiliary view. And I'm going to project out my points P, Q, and R. So Q is projected out. PH and RH. So they've all been projected out perpendicular to the X1, Y1. Now, if we project from the plan, we take our heights from the elevation. So, what I always do here is I take the highest point and the lowest height point. So, I'm going to take the height from the XY line up to RH in this case, which is the highest one. Back distance there. Move slightly to make sure I have the right one. There we go. RH. Follow it down to here. I'm going to mark it up from the X1, Y1. I'll just make sure I have it right there. Okay, now that I have that, I'm going to get the height of the lowest one. This one here. Okay, and I'm going to mark that out from QH, which is the lowest one. Now, technically, if I connect these two points, so I suppose this one up here is RH1, because we're on the X1, Y1, I'm going to call it RH1. This is QH1, that's the head wall, okay? If I connect those, technically where it goes through this line should be technically PH1. Now, I will take the height. We'll see what my accuracy was like. So there's the height. See how close I was? I'm going to mark it out. Because all the three of these should technically meet in a straight line. Okay, now I'm going to connect them up first. I'll test my accuracy. They're actually working out pretty much bang on. Put a half a mil out in the middle one. And there you have it. There is the line. Now I put that in once again. Here. And there we have it. Okay. Now that point right there 
can see I was over about half mil that there is um, pH one. Okay, but most importantly, what it does and it determines to us is the angle that that surface, the stratum of ore, makes in relation to the x1, y1, which is representing our ground, our horizontal plane. So that's known as our dip angle. Okay, so inside there, that angle inside there is our dip. Usually kind of little symbol like that put in. You could extend this line on and extend this down to meet it. And by all means then, you could measure it out. So if I want to extend that, and extend this guy out, Kind of like you can kind of see how I'm roughly putting it in there. You get a point here and you can measure in the angle. Absolutely fine as well. Okay, so that is the second part of the question done. Determine the strike and dip of the stratum. Part number three, the length of the borehole from P as it passes through the stratum is 15 meters. Determine the thickness of the stratum. Okay, so this is actually where they're basically saying how we're going to find the thickness. This is why they told us about the top surface. The length of the borehole from P, so from P, which is basically up here in the elevation, okay, as it passes through the stratum. Now that's the important bit, the stratum of ore. The stratum of ore only begins when you find the head wall, and then obviously how far is it away to the foot wall, and that will determine the thickness. So it says here, the length of the borehole from P as it passes through the stratum, passes through pH, is 15 meters. Determine the thickness. Okay. So what they're basically saying is, as it passes through, it's 15 meters away to the foot wall. So from pH, I'm going to measure a distance of 15 meters. Okay, so from pH, I'm going to measure down 15 meters, which is 15 millimeters. And technically, that point right there that I've now found, I'll put this one in red, is PF. That is the point uh, on the borehole P where we find the foot wall. Okay, now that I've found the foot wall, Okay, it's still on the same one. The foot wall is there. It'll come down here. It'll still be here. How do I find that? I have to find it in my plan view. Okay, so now that I found it in my elevation, how do I find it in my plan? I'm simply going to project down PF. So PH was along this one. PF will be along this one. So you can see, label it once again. That will be. PF, and all I'm going to do now is project it out. Because once I have one point on the foot wall, I can actually draw in the whole foot wall because it will be parallel to the head wall. So, parallel to our projection lines. From PF, out there like that. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the height from the elevation. From the XY line up to PF, that height there, and I'm going to mark it out along the line PF there. Okay, that there, you can see that little height there, it's kind of hard to see, but that is PF1, I suppose, in this case, and I'll put in now parallel to the head wall, which we've already got. Parallel to that line, I'm going to put in the foot wall. And the foot wall will just be going through the PF line. Okay, head wall in green, foot wall in red, but most importantly, the area between them, that area inside there, is the thickness. And I'm just going to mark that with a T, with a T. Okay, and if you want, you can come along and measure it. For me, it's saying it's pretty much like 10.5, so it's probably 10 millimeters, or in this case, 10 meters. Okay, um, so there you have it, folks. That there is the third part of the question completed. Just going to take it off. A little bit kind of hard in the understanding of how they word it. That is always going to be the challenge in these questions. The length of the borehole from P as it passes through the stratum is 15 meters. So the length of the borehole from P as it passes through the stratum. That was the important bit there. I'll just highlight that bit there as it passes through the stratum. From P as it passes through the stratum. So basically, where did the stratum of ore start? It started at the, the head wall. And then obviously we measure down 15 to find a point on the foot wall. 15 meters, determine the thickness. Worked our way around. Once we had the head wall, 
uh, as an edgery, we could find a foot wall as an edgery once we had one point on it. Okay, and we got the thickness. But there you have it, folks. Um, that there was the 2021 um, leave and sort higher level question. Okay, based on the topic of geologic geometry. Hope you found that helpful. Okay.